Welcome to the November meeting of the Cape Elizabeth School Board. Uh, the first item on our agenda tonight is adjustments to the agenda. The, do the, does the superintendent or the board have any adjustments? Dr. Golden? Yes, I have received a letter from a, a teacher who is asking, as a personal request, uh, which, uh, which I would like to add under new business probably uh, in item C. Rosemary? Yes, Madam Chairman, I would like to add an item 7E, uh, report on the Town Center Committee, and 7F, a report from the community team. Please. Mm -hmm. Any other adjustments? Okay. The second item is approval of school board minutes meeting of Tuesday, October 8th, 1991. Any corrections or additions? Rosemary? I'm sorry. I was just going to ask for uh, acceptance of the minutes without change. Oh, Martin. Mm -hmm. On page 17B, uh, 7A, Mrs. Chapman should read Mr. Foray. Okay. Page 17B. Any others? Okay, the minutes stand approved is read. Comments by the middle school representatives, please. Hello, my name is Christy Sternberg and I am the sixth grade school board representative. The report cards are, were handed out to the middle school students today. Conferences with parents will be held now in the December break. The middle school has invited the community people to visit the school between November 18th through the 22nd. The Sally Foster gift wrap, which was sold to benefit the trip to Truonky in April, has arrived and will be, will be delivered. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Lauren Gibbons, and our first dance was on Friday, October 18th, and it went fairly smoothly, but there were some people that were trying to steal some candy towards the end, and we had a fairly big problem with that, so we're considering buying a lock to put on the concession stand door. Um, on, Monday the on Monday, the 7th and 8th grade, bands are going to Mar Marlboro, Massachusetts for the Nelms Convention. And on Sunday, the Jingle Bell Run for Arthritis will be held at Casco Bay. And our school is putting together a challenge team to raise pledge money to donate to, this, to the Arthritis Foundation. And Student Council is going to pay their entry fee to participate in the race. Our president, Chris Roberts, would like to establish a can drive where each class will have a box in their classroom to put canned food in. The class that collects the most canned goods will receive some kind of a prize. Thank you. Thank you. Our high school representatives are at a sports banquet, so they'll report as soon as they arrive. Uh, business manager's report. Jan, hi. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> there you are. This is not a quarterly report. However, I'd like to call your attention to page 27. I guess all we've heard about in the last week or so is you know, the state budgets as far as just how much or how deep the cuts will be to the school departments throughout the state. The last number that we heard was 4%, which would uh, equate to roughly $82,000 for Cape Elizabeth schools. The rest of the revenues are, are uh, being received as projected. Uh, the following two other pages highlight the the expenditures for the uh, four months that have gone by up to October 30th. Uh, we have expended roughly 31% of our budget. And looking back for the last couple of years, uh, we're pretty much online. Last year or so was 29% of our total budget expended to date. Uh, I've highlighted on the following three pages some of the accounts that uh, should be noted. Uh, 
We have finished a portable update, therefore we have expended all the monies in those accounts. Uh, the last payment was, was made. There's, I believe, 1,500 and some odd dollars that are still pending, and I've talked to the engineers about that, and we will still, uh, we will be getting a, an updated billing sometimes this month, and we will update you next month on that. Uh, to date, we have taken $24,033.92 from the contingency account, leaving us a balance of $37,613.08 in the same account. At uh, the same time period, we did transfer all of the $25,000 to the food service program. I'd like to stop here to see if there's any questions at all on the general program. If not, I'd like to go on. The following page highlights the, uh, the portable retrofit. Uh, the page 31 is your federal and state programs for 91, 92. We anticipate receiving $201,000. Today we have received 98,000 and have expended 32 with a balance or a cash balance of 66,000. Food service program for October, just uh, as, as far as operating, had a, a, a net gain of $5,104.83. To date, we have cash available after the transfer of the $25,000 of $9,872. Uh, not bad com compared to a year ago, last year, and even better than the year before. Uh, the fund balance for that same program is explained on page 32A, where a year ago last year we had a deficit fund balance of $6,100, and this year, the same time period, we have a, a positive cash flow or fund balance of uh, $10,819. Community services program highlights the following three pages with a year-to-date revenue of $255,000 and expenditures of $206,000. Enrollments have stabilized. However, uh, we're up to two students for this month compared to last uh, October. And they would, they're showing up at the elementary level. The high school has stayed the same. The middle school is down one. The high school is up three students. And the following six or seven pages highlights the energy accounts as far as fuel, uh, transportation uh, costs, and the uh, electricity costs for the year or two compared to uh, two or three years ago. Charlie. Last month you said that, that Central Maine Power was going to look into why we were using more electricity. Have they completed that? We have, we sent away for the uh, printouts. I believe they are in. We are, the engineers are now analyzing to see what happened. Uh, from what we can gather, July, I believe it's July and August, or August and September, not, uh, 8 o'clock in the mornings when we peaked both months. So what we have done is we're going around through the cafeterias and to the uh, the IA shops mainly, and trying to find out what their daily routine is in the morning. Do X amount of switches come on at the same time? Uh, are the kitchens, all the ovens go on at the same time? And that's what we're up to. We have picked up some of that increase that we had the first two months in September, however, or October. However, it's still not what it should be. We are looking into it. I will hopefully have a better report for you on the uh, electricity logs as far as uh, for next month when the data should be in. Uh, we're printing on the on the system on a daily basis. We are analyzing the data. We are pinpointing when the peak periods do occur in the morning. And it seems to be like 8 is a common number along with uh, 9.30 to quarter to 10. So we will be, uh, be getting back to you on those. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Communications. Okay. Um, I did distribute in your packet uh, some uh, communications. Uh, actually, we had a couple of articles that parents had sent me uh, 
expressly asking uh, that they be shared with you. Um, one on uh, math education and a letter from Dr. C, uh, particularly for people who were not on the board last year because this was a summary of uh, math education um, actually sent last year but wanted uh, to be made available this year. A copy of an article that appeared recently in Atlantic Monthly mm -hmm. on uh, suggesting, uh, I think, some of the concerns that I've heard at least from some people in the community about quality education. Um, in addition, I would like to take this opportunity to uh, comment a little bit more about the I have had several communications from MSMA, the Maine School Management Association, um, and have had conversations with um, people from our own Teachers Association about conversations they're having uh, through the MTA. Uh, we would like to urge people to understand that uh, uh, we know it's important to communicate with staff and with parents obviously with students too, uh, about just exactly what does this budget crisis mean for us here in Cape Elizabeth. If I knew, I would certainly comment on that. I don't know exactly. Um, Dee has mentioned earlier uh, this evening that what 4% of our subsidy would amount to, but uh, frankly, we're not absolutely certain that that is the, the figure or uh, what that would imply for us. Um, we, we too have to sort of wait and see what's happening. I would point out that both the MTA and the MSMA are asking for parents as well as uh, staff and school board members to write letters or to contact our representatives, um, write a letter to the governor, or the idea of indicating that education is certainly a prime issue. I think as we speak, there are people now in Augusta for a hearing on education. Um, we're obviously not there. Um, so I'd sim simply like to say that to some degree I feel it's important for us to remember a business as usual is important. Um, every day that each youngster spends in school right now is precious and important. And um, while we can't ignore the clouds hanging over our heads, at the same time we need to do today what needs to be done today and not to become derailed by our fears for the future. Uh, certainly Cape Elizabeth is in a somewhat better position perhaps in some communities and I don't want to say that in a uh, smug way or uh, I am really concerned for what I see statewide. But um, uh, I just say it as a fact. We will probably not get wiped out the way uh, some communities may feel they're going to be. But we don't know exactly what the implications are and we do have some alternatives. As soon as we know more definitely, we will certainly share that, not only with the board, but with the staff and community. I also, under communications, want to take the opportunity to ask uh, Frank Miles uh, from the high school to explain. He contacted me um, earlier. He had um, a problem with a communication, and he needs to explain that to you and to, to the community at large. Okay? The uh, high school for the first time this year is trying to establish the practice of having parent conferences in November. And we had uh, every expectation of having in parents' hands last week notification of those conferences and a method of signing up for them uh, beginning last Friday. Due to circumstances beyond our control, that did not happen. And what we plan to go ahead with those conferences in any case and have added a conference time two weeks from now as well. We plan to hold conferences this Thursday afternoon from 12 to 3 and in the evening from 5.30 to 7.30 and on Friday morning from 8.30 to 11.30. Parents may sign up for those conferences by calling the high school office at 799-3309 and we will do our best to, to match you up with a teacher whom you most wish to see. Because of the multiple schedules or the, the multiple teachers that, that high school students have, it's difficult for us to, to arrange sequential conferences all in a row for you with all five or seven teachers. But we will do the very best we can to make sure that you have a conference with a teacher that you feel that you, you would like to. Um, we have also added Wednesday the 27th of November, which is a, an early re another early release day. And we will hold conferences uh, that day from 11.15 to 2 o'clock for any parents who wish to sign up. Uh, we feel that the, the communications process that has gone on this, this past two weeks has not been to our satisfaction and we need to 
try to extend the, the opportunities for parents to be in touch with high school teachers. Finally, any parent can schedule a conference with a high school teacher uh, by calling the high school and arranging for a conference either during a teacher's unassigned period or after school. We very much would like to have parents feel that they can confer with high school teachers. I know their, their children are sometimes reluctant to have that happen, that adolescence is something that they like to increase the distance between uh, parents and themselves and, and because they're asserting their independence and we admire that at the same time we really believe that communication with parents is important. So again, uh, this Thursday from 12 to 3 or from 5.30 to 7.30, Friday from 8.30 to 11.30 or on Wednesday the 27th, the day before Thanksgiving uh, from 11.15 to 2. We look forward to seeing parents. Thank you. Um, those would be my communications. Okay, I have one to add. Um, the National Forensic League sent a letter to Frank Miles uh, informing him that the Cape Elizabeth High School National, National Forensic League chapter has been awarded the leading chapter award in the main district. So congratulations to those students and Dick Mullen, who is chair of the Fine Arts Department. Okay, superintendent's report. Okay, um, we've held now uh, two of our community, Common Core community dialogue meetings. We had a small group meeting last uh, Tuesday, a week ago, and we will have another one uh, tomorrow night at the high school library. Um, we have lots of data from those. Uh, it's going to be a fascinating um, and challenging exercise to write this up, but we want to uh, I'll just make a couple of comments. Um, in general and, and we will, of course will be an ongoing story. Uh, I think it's important to realize that this is an opening up exercise. This is not the end of the vision. Uh, capturing everybody's vision and we've had now about 160 people turned out the first evening, somewhere between 30 and 40 uh, for a small group meeting which I thought was a really fine turnout. I don't know how many will be there tomorrow and again on the 19th of this month we're holding a wrap-up session. How much we will have in writing by that time, I don't know, but our, our goal is to have at least enough so that we can share some common themes. Uh, I'm quite sure from what I'm seeing that we will be able to write up uh, a good solid paper on re reflecting the variety of uh, visions that are uh, coming out of these discussions. But again, the caution I would have is that people see this as a step in a process, not the end of the process. That is, we won't finish this with a nice, neat, tight vision, uh, but it will certainly give us a lot of indication of what is on people's minds. Really thank everybody involved in this uh, exercise and uh, really thank the people who have been coming out and I was delighted to see high school students there on um, both our nights. I hope that uh, students will continue to come. It's really important. Uh, for you to uh, take part in these things. Um, I think that's probably all I need to say about that unless somebody else wants to add anything. Going on, uh, last month we talked about the fifth grade band and course scheduling issue and I did include in your packet a uh, note from Beth Henderson and Nancy St. John regarding that they have sent letters home. Um, and uh, I'm not sure I have an update from last week, but I don't know what might have happened between then and now. The, uh, as the note you have says, received uh, so far 18 written replies, 16 of which supported the recommendation to have band and chorus at some time other than during the day in order to strengthen time available for um, academic programs. Uh, the, at least the, uh, we're keeping track of those uh, comments as they come in and we are reading the ones that don't want us to do it that way too and considering those uh, seriously. But today it seems as if the tide is flowing in favor of fitting band in, a band in chorus in before school starts. Um, I don't think we've yet received all of the uh, letters back or the highest proportion of them but, uh, and this is not a decision that is, um, impacting us uh, immediately, but we, we feel we see a direction. We'd like to share that with you and, and uh, hear from you on that. And Nancy is here to discuss it if you wish. Any comments? Rosemary? Yes, as a matter of clarification, Madam Chairman, 
Um, in this report, it says this change would give students an opportunity to two additional periods of learning. Is that per week, Nancy? Uh, I'm sorry, I don't have. Good question. That would be, uh, because we're working on a six-day rotating basis, that would be every six days. Thank you. And to update you on the uh, response, I do have about 14 additional parent response forms that came back today. They were all in favor of moving the rehearsal time to preschool before the school day. So out of 32, only two were opposed? That's right. That's and there right. are 100 students affected? Approximately, yes, 99. So. Have we looked at busing impact? Well, I spoke with Charlie Friedman about the busing, and uh, one thing I didn't speak to in the memo was that many, many parents were very willing to, many of the parents that replied, specifically <coughs> spoke to the fact that they would be happy to transport their child to school for, for that time. The, uh, in speaking with Charlie Friedman, he indicated to me that there was one bus run that seemed to be fairly crowded at this point, and it was the Mitchell Road bus run. And until we had moved a little bit further on this issue, uh, he seemed pretty willing at that point to feel that most students, or all students, could be accommodated. And Connie indicated, I believe last month, and, and Charlie supported this, that we do have one bus, I believe, that is not operating at that time. And if we had to, I believe we could tap that, that bus to help us out. Because with the, the number of middle school parents who deliver their children at that time, I would hate to see another 30 more, 40 cars impacting <laughs> that well, situation. That's something like we really don't have any control over that. I would encourage the bus route to as, do a, pick up. as an ultimate, sure. strong ultimate. Well, we can encourage that. I, but. I think once they get down in there, they might not. They may just change their again. mind. It was like my one time at the high school, my son either took the bus or <laughs> rode his bike. So. Yeah, yeah, I could understand that. What's the timeline now for, for implementing this? Well, in actuality, chorus is about ready to start. Chorus could begin whenever this is approved. Should this be approved, uh, Rebecca Wings, willing to go go ahead. Tony, uh, as of last board meeting, was asking for six weeks, so probably we're talking another two to three weeks before band would actually begin their rehearsal together. Okay. Now, as I understand it, this doesn't require a vote, is that right? No, it's not an addition uh, to your basic um, curriculum and so on. It's a rescheduling, which normally is an administrative issue. The reason it's coming to you and being surfaced this way is because we would like you to be aware of the fact that this is a change in past practice um, and because it impacts people's um, schedules and so forth. We obviously would like to have input from parents as well as uh, your understanding and if any of you uh, had some you know, uh, real issues with this, we would like to know it before than after we implemented it. But I don't see that there's any necessity for you to vote on it. We would be curious to know if you have any opinions. We would like to hear them. But uh, we feel that this is a, um, you know, an administrative recommendation. We are sensitive, to, of course, to the fact that it's certainly going to inconvenience people. Even people who are giving us positive feedback on this are going to find that, yeah, it is inconvenient and um, so on and so forth. And, and until we can come, up, can come up with maybe a better solution, this is it. I'd only received one call, and that was, a, I think, to some degree, a misunderstanding. But okay. Rosemary? I just need help with the six-day rotation. So does that mean that mm -hmm. the students will be taking a different bus or getting a ride or, in effect, having a different start time <laughs> twice every six days or once every six days as opposed to every Wednesday or every Friday? That's right. The, we would, it would be working on a, on a, for example, it would be on day one. Suppose band was on day one. Whenever day one came around, students would have that band rehearsal. When day two, and I, and I please don't hold me to which day it may be. It may right. be day no, two or three. I don't know exactly which day it will be. That would be up to students and parents to 
be, keep track of that scheduling. But with a little coaching, I, I would think fifth graders might manage that well. Um, we, in the beginning, would be very willing to communicate through classrooms and through uh, the music program. Tomorrow is day such and such band rehearsal. Uh, we're, we will do all that we can to support that. Maybe a calendar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this if is. there's mm -hmm. a chance, you could write it out and send it for parents okay. to. I, all right. I, I, I just see that as, as a, an obstacle. As an sure. obstacle that sure. if we could avoid that now, because I do see parents saying, well, I don't know what day it is, you know, in the rotation. I just know it's Tuesday. So I just would like, if we could help make that simpler, I would like to. All right. Any idea. suggestions like that, I'd be very happy to try to accommodate. And I did get mm -hmm. two negative um, calls. I don't know that uh, you got them in writing. I don't but know. But I just wanted to add that okay. to the. But the general feeling from the board is support of this idea, is that right? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Moving on. Mm -hmm. Traffic flow at the high school. This is in the nature of a follow-up. We had uh, in our October meeting um, some discussion and then follow-up meetings on uh, another problem that uh, became evident once we actually constricted the traffic at the high school. Um, we met with uh, Michael McGovern, the town manager, as well as police chief, the town planner, um, uh, and the uh, road uh, commissioner, and uh, as well as our own staff, and we really feel that we have done the best we can do for the time being. There were two issues that came up in those meetings. One was a short-term solution, which was to deal with the circumstances as they sit. Uh, and probably the most effective um, means that we've been uh, trying out is to extend the time of a lady who was working for the police department as a crossing guide who is now taking a 20-minute um, station down at the high school and uh, doing an admirable job. We're really grateful to her and to um, the police department for making that uh, available to us. It really does seem to help move traffic along and in the right way. Uh, however, another issue was raised in those uh, meetings, and that was uh, primarily from the town planner, um, that all of our discussions about space use uh, are certainly going to add traffic to the high school. And the time has probably come when we ought to think like a helicopter and sort of poise ourselves over <coughs> that whole area and look down at the traffic pattern, because there are some problems with pickup, drop-off spots, the community service use of um, for instance, the uh, preschool and after school. Uh, and there certainly are some problems with uh, traffic uh, getting constricted at certain uh, times in addition to the uh, time that we're seeing at the uh, start of school. It is better. We feel that at least it's under control. And if anybody has any comment to add to it or doesn't feel that that's the case, I, I will certainly listen to what we can do. Yes, thank you, Madam Chairman. I've received a lot of public comment on this issue. Um, I could be because I'm down there watching and directing traffic uh, unofficially, of course. Um, some of the concerns that have been made, raised from members of the public are the um, inconvenience and perhaps the lack of appropriateness of the one way during non school uh, days, uh, specifically Friday night at the One Axe. Uh, when there was uh, no way that the traffic would have inconvenienced anyone at the upper um, schools. Uh, and egress from Scott Dyer could have uh, helped with the um, backlog there. And also the two soccer games, one at 4 o'clock in the afternoon on a Tuesday uh, when school was not in session and one on a Saturday. And uh, one of the issues I would like to uh, raise again is uh, perhaps opening discussions with the appropriate town officials about making that one way during school hours and uh, putting a bag over the do not enter sign or something during sporting events um, and things like the uh, one X or some other variation um, of that. And I'm doing that uh, for the most part to recognize um, public input that I've received um, to that issue. The other thing is uh, tickets are being given to people who illegally park in front of the high school. Uh, we have 
um, a very serious problem with people dropping off their children and you know carrying on extended conversations or people stopping to pick up their students and failing to move in either trapping the buses or not allowing the buses to get past the turnaround uh, where it is their goal uh, to be every day. Um, so just a warning to anyone who is parking in those hashed marks, they're there for not, no parking and the police will be ticketing. Thank you. Okay, yeah. Moving on, the, uh, we have scheduled December 3rd for a school board workshop. This is basically rescheduling the November workshop, which we decided to move last month, realizing we had other meetings this, this uh, month. That will be on uh, the school space study report. We have had a joint meeting with the town council on that, and I know that some of those uh, tapes have been replayed. Uh, perhaps people have begun to understand, but this is a very complicated issue. There are a lot of decisions that we have to make in the next few months, in some cases probably the next two or three months, and that the, um, public, uh, the opportunity for public input is really important. Um, the, so that that workshop will be held here on December 3rd. We will continue to advertise it as we do all our workshops, uh, but it is an opportunity for staff parents uh, to come and, and um, try to respond to that. If anybody's looking for a copy of the report, the full report is available in uh, my office where it can be signed out and borrowed because we are running out of copies and um, that's a, the full report has a lot of building diagrams and so on for a variety of reasons. It's difficult to, uh, to just keep running off copies. Uh, we also, however, have two copies available in Thomas More a Library to be signed out or studied there, and there are copies available in each building at the principal's office. Um, and again, if somebody has finds that any of those uh, avenues are not sufficient, please call me and we will find you a copy. Anybody that wants to read the full report, we want you to, to do so. We also, however, will have and do have copies of the executive summary. And those we're trying to keep up with anybody that wants them. We'll bring them to the December 3rd meeting. We'll have them as handouts. And they do give you at least a good overview of what the various options are that we're talking about. Um, I also want to uh, mention at this point that there's an informal workshop for school board members next Monday from 3 to 5. I've a, I've, it's actually a meeting I'm setting up with the have set up with the architect, Frank Locker, who is responsible for having uh, put together the study. Uh, and frankly, this is a workshop for school board members to sit down and understand the timeline. Uh, no construction, renovation, or even a series of public meetings goes on without planning. That is, you have to know what your um, operative timelines are, whether they're budget uh, requests for town council to consider uh, a request for bonding issues and so forth and so on. So um, the process must go on even while we are trying to make decisions. That is, we have to have a, a, a planning framework. So those two meetings that I wanted to mention tonight about that. And the December 3rd one will be at 7.30. And yes. also I think we probably should say that that will not be the only opportunity to, to meet and discuss this. There will be other meetings as well. Mm -hmm. Moving on. Moving on. Excuse me. Air quality test report. Um, I have sent you in your packet a summary of and also a copy of a test report on air quality. Um, for those of you who notice the article in the paper, uh, we look like we had an outrageously high, uh, what they call parts per million um, CO2. Uh, at Ponco Media Center, I'm happy to report that that is nowhere near as high as the paper reported and that it falls within ranges that are considered uh, ranges that one should monitor, retest, and consider some action but not considered an emergency. Um, and as you see when you go through the rest of the report, all of our testing fell in that category. Some of the rooms, uh, including some in other parts of the portables that we use in the system, fall below uh, any even consideration for um, concern. Uh, I also point out in my memo to you that we have done some testing in uh, parts of the older building that are not, are not uh, 
temporary spaces because we have some concerns about the inadequacies of our ventilation and air exchange return systems. Um, those comments do show up in the report, the study report, and uh, again, we've had some of them spot checked. None of them are so alarming that we have an emergency on our hands, but they certainly do point to a need for thorough renovation of our air exchange systems. Charlie? Do you have any idea why the state's tests were so high? Their yeah. Results? They, they actually sent us uh, little containers, and it was up to the staff to put them into the rooms and uh, to collect them. Now, what happens if you put something in a library, and I can't tell you for sure this happened, but it's a speculation of the people who actually came in, the Northeast test people. Uh, if, if it's in a room like that with a lot of traffic, a kid youngster can go up to one of that little, little container, breathe into it. Well, you can really have a whopping CO2 count if, if that's what happens, because uh, as you exhale, uh, you're, you know, basically a high percentage of CO2, and it would be, you know, concentrated in that. That was his speculation, uh, and having seen it in a number of other instances. And the state, that's why the state, I think the newspaper report was a good one, because he did, the reporter did comment that um, Ted Bradstreet, who is the one person in the state of Maine who's responsible for testing air quality in every school. <laughs> in the state, which is why we went out and tested on, on our own. Uh, obviously, he has an impossible job. Um, he told us that they know that that's an inadequate way to test. It's simply the only way in which he could begin to at least try to suggest to schools they ought to be testing. But I think to publish it like they did state, well, I mean, we weren't the only school. I mean, there's some districts with numerous portables, and I mean, and if these tests are inaccurate, I think that was very bad. Well, hopefully, people who read the article and also who have called, um, and I'm certainly trying to make this public, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm sending copies to the buildings, asking the principals to share those um, widely with staff and hopefully uh, with students to reassure people. Um, it isn't as if there was absolutely no problem. There are some concerns, and not so much health concerns, themselves as the fact that we are not getting the air exchange quality that we would really like to have. They're not optimum, but they're simply not a, uh, as, you know, an emergency nature the way it was outlined. I don't know why they published it. <laughs> anyway, I'm satisfied that we've done what we should do, and we will continue to monitor. If this gets worse, um, we will take steps. There are some fans that we could, could use. There are some things that we could do. Ann? Are, are we planning to retest? Um, because some, some of these are somewhat high, and, and the testing was done when there was either uh, very few people in the rooms or um, there were a lot of windows open. Mm -hmm. um, I would be very interested to see what the numbers were in the middle of the winter in a full classroom with, without ventilation, which I think is probably more common. Right. And we will, in fact, that is part of the uh, recommendation. We will certainly follow up on that. I also think that um, uh, we'll continue. Uh, Gary Spencer has been very much involved with this. This is all part of you recall. We now made him our system-wide maintenance person. And so he's, uh, he walks around with the people while they're going through whatever collection they go through. He understands it, follows it, monitors, and will I'm confident that we will at least be monitoring. And if we find that things get worse, we will have to do what we have to do. Okay. Moving on. Oh, sorry, Charlie. You were also doing some spore testing, I believe, of the yes. old, one of the older buildings. Has that report come back? Yes, it has, and it's essentially negative. Uh, the problem is in those particular spaces, there really isn't any good ventilation also. So we, we don't, the, the um, spore and bacterial count is very low. It does not indicate any anything unusual. Um, however, we have to say that, uh, that that's, there's still not good spaces. Uh, and perhaps uh, some of the, um, if people are experiencing discomfort, it may be simply because of lack of uh, good ventilation, and, but at least it's not the spore problem. Okay. okay. And the last item on my report is the establishment of system-wide curriculum committees. I should point out that you have had um, a system-wide interest in curriculum uh, in the past few years, and uh, 
We've had groups meeting. They've been meeting primarily as grade level groups or groups of grade level groups. Um, and there's been a good deal of staff development that's gone on one way or the other. So um, obviously reflecting your board goals and reflecting my own interests and the, the interests of the administration, we feel the time has come to really look at a lot of issues system-wide. And uh, so I sent you a memo that is either has gone out or will be going out to a group of teachers, some of whom still to be determined. Uh, it has been discussed with the administration, and we look forward to getting started on this very important work. Okay. School board subcommittees and reports. Uh, the first one is policy subcommittee report. Yeah, that's, that's me. <clears throat> uh, the policy subcommittee met on October 30th to review the first section of the policy manual, which is foundations and basic commitments. Um, and we, we took the following action or made the following recommendations on those policies. Uh, policy ABB staff involvement in decision making was a suggested new policy which we are tabling for further discussion within the subcommittee. Um, current policies which we reviewed and accepted uh, as is were policy ABC student involvement in decision making and policy AGA recognition for accomplishment. Current policies reviewed and accepted pending further study were policy AC non-discrimination, which will be updated by the superintendent, policy AD educational philosophy, which will be reviewed after the completion of the community dialogue meetings, policy AE goals of education, which will also be reviewed after completion of community dialogue meetings, and policy AFCB teacher evaluation, which will be reviewed after the completion of the joint study committee. Um, an administrative guideline contained in this section uh, is number 13, teacher evaluation process will be updated by the superintendent. And uh, policies in this section that require action by the board are the following new policies, policy ACA, non-sexist language, policy ACB, harassment, policy AFB, evaluation of the superintendent, Policy AFCA, evaluation of administrators, and policy AFE, evaluation of instructional programs, and those will be discussed later in this meeting. Um, and we also reviewed the personnel policy for central office support staff and recommend adoption by the board. <coughs> Our next meeting will be on Tuesday, November 26th at 11.30 a.m. to discuss section B. Any comments? Thank you. Maine School Management Association Fall Conference. Charlie? Uh, <clears throat> the, the Maine School Management Association, Maine School, Bo School Boards Association Fall Conference was held on Thursday, October 31st uh, and, and November 1st. Um, on October 31st, Rosemary, Peter, and myself attended. Um, we each attended numerous clinics, um, among them were um, defining and measuring school finance equity in Maine, uh, thinking outside the box, a restructuring of the high school, uh, budget accountability, justifying the fact, which all three of us attended, uh, designing employee benefit plans, school construction, how to get started and who does what and when, top down or bottom up, a report on Portland's three-year school improvement initiative, um, I also, as your delegate, attended the, um, the Maine School Boards Association um, Delegate Assembly. There were 29 resolutions to be considered. Of those, 26 were passed. The meeting was adjourned um, mid-meeting to be able to attend a open forum being given by the Commissioner of Education. Um, it was very enlightening since it was essentially a day or so after um, McKernan's, um, ab in, fact, that it, in fact, the next day she had to turn in her completed budget of where she recommended cuts. And it was quite interesting to see the areas that she was looking at. 94.5% um, of her budget is um, general assistance. So it doesn't leave too much in administration to be, administrative costs to be cut. 
but she was looking at 1.9 million to cut in her operation budget, which involved about 24 and a half positions. Um, there would be elimination of some departments. Um, there would be closing of a couple regional offices for drug uh, and alcohol um, assistance, and um, there would be a drastic reduction of technical assistance, reduction of school construction funding, and special projects, um, a reduction in school bus funding. Um, and then she opened up the meeting to essentially any suggestions coming from superintendents and school boards and she had people there to write down these suggestions. So even, even as of October 31st, she was trying to get as much uh, school input into suggestions. Some of those were uh, essentially extending the school day, um, uh, realigning um, the school year, essentially um, closing school for essentially around the holidays for about a month and extending it into July. These are all the types of situ uh, suggestions that were coming forward. What she really stressed was um, the minimal disruption of, of classroom instruction and encouraging cuts that impact classes last. So her focus was the student. Um, it was very informative. At that meeting, they also took an informal poll of those school board members who wanted to be told where to cut and those who wanted to have local authority um, to make those decisions. And of course, Cape Elizabeth voted for local authority. <laughs> and of course, those uh, school boards receiving 90% funding wanted to have a state mandate on where to cut. So uh, that's, it was interesting. It was an even split when they counted the votes. It was also interesting that the keynote speaker and actually one of the workshops that I went, went to was given by um, a Dr. John Augenblick, who was a consultant in school funding out of Colorado. And he's been working the last year with, within the state and the education department of looking at the way we fund. And during the workshop, he actually said that Maine's method of funding for general assistance is probably one of the most equitable in the state. And then the fact that they do have a circuit breaker, even though they haven't fully funded it, which should help to offset property taxes for those that are impacted. So he says that of all the states, that we probably have one, one of the better equitable systems. Um, um, he also, in his keynote address, showed that how Maine compared to the national average over the last 10 years in school funding. And um, in 1980, um, we essentially were below the national average of, of about 11.7% uh, and around 1984-85, we were only about 9.8% and by the year 1989-90, we actually were 13.9% above the national average in per pupil uh, expenditure. Um, if you looked at the average teacher salaries, uh, we have been below the national average, but we have been getting better as far as the getting closer to it. So even though we're spending more per pupil expenditure, and, and some of our teachers' salaries are coming up, um, we seem to be spending for more services. That's about the only way he could equate why we seem to be spending more per pupil. And a lot of those are mandated services within the last 10 years. Comments or questions? Thank you very much. Total quality management meetings. Rosemary? Uh, yes, thank you. Um, I am uh, attending, uh, under Connie's leadership, a um, total quality task force with the bus driver custodian classification which uh, involves uh, 11 people when you count the supervisors. Basically what total quality is is operating um, excellence and it's a, an approach where uh, you take a look at what you're doing 
um, and uh, you concentrate on doing the right things right. Uh, some of the questions that we're addressing in these meetings are uh, what do the bus driver custodian classifications need, what do we expect of them, and what sort of problems do they face in their jobs. Um, we focus on expectations and we have identified um, 12 problems uh, and 12 problems and areas that we're going to focus on in the upcoming weeks and hopefully come to some good resolutions and have better quality in our transportation um, department. Thank you. Okay, and the uh, joint study committee, and that's um, a committee that I uh, am on, and it's basically, uh, and Mark also is on that committee, and we meet weekly or every other week to try and continue the work that was started last year on restructuring the career ladder. And right now we're in the process of looking at some of the, the points that we think we could move through fairly quickly and, uh, and get those taken care of. And by February we hope to have a report to present to the board on recommendations for uh, the restructuring. report on the town center committee yes thank you madam chairman uh, the town center committee is having a public hearing thursday uh, right here in the uh, chambers and we will be basically reviewing three plans um, and asking for public input on uh, the plans uh, regarding the town center which is basically the area from tarbox triangle uh, to follow road and from Scott Dyer and Farm Hill over to um, 1226 uh, Shore Road, which is the new um, municipal building. And those drawings, those three plans are on display right now at the Thomas Memorial Library, the IGA, and the Town Hall. And we certainly hope to hear from people on that. Uh, in terms of how um, these proposed plans uh, and they're not even proposed plans, how these plans, excuse me, um, impact the school. Basically, they're, they're only complementing the school at this point. Um, they're not taking away any land or making any recommendations <coughs> for changing. So I just would like to clarify that point. And that's the end of my report on the Town Center Committee. Um, I'd like to report for a moment on the community team meeting and on Thursday. On the second floor of the high school, uh, we will be having a, the November community team meeting. It is open to all parents um, of uh, students or any member of the general public. We deal primarily with uh, health issues, and it is not just for the high school parents, as some people think. So please come. Thank you. Okay. Unfinished business. Report and request for teacher assistant teacher assistance in the fourth grade. Uh, you will recall that in the October board meeting we followed up what we had actually started out talking about in September, that we had more youngsters at the fourth grade level than we had predicted. And I actually I call your attention to the enrollment sheet. Um, when the budget was put together last year, we, if you look at last year's third grade, we had 136 youngsters uh, anticipated uh, going into the fourth grade. We now have 149, uh, which doesn't sound like a lot in addition, but when you make a tight um, recommendation in budget, that's uh, unfortunately what can happen. Um, after the board meeting, we followed your suggestion of sending out a survey to parents about whether um, they would feel uh, that they could release their child to go to a new uh, section and we very quickly realized that most parents did in fact favor a smaller uh, section of fourth graders but did have a lot of an uh, anxiety about moving their child once a year had gotten started. I think that's a very understandable feeling and uh, was not surprising to hear back from parents on that. So at this point administratively we are certainly not suggesting that we go with another section for all the reasons that we did discuss in October. What we, however, have come back to you with and in your um, packet was a memo uh, from both Beth and Nancy uh, St. John, the administrators at that uh, section, uh, to 
fund two teacher assistants um, and because we have six sessions two would seem to be the um, the right number that is one assistant for each three classes dividing up their time as I indicate to you here the kinds of things that they would be doing um, obviously we we really need some direction from you as to whether we should go ahead uh, with this plan um, before we actually break it down into a time schedule but you can roughly see what that would be um, figuring that about a quarter of the year has already gone by and looking at what we pay teacher assistance the cost would be approximately twelve thousand a piece or twenty four thousand uh, obviously I'm sitting here wondering how we can make a decision like this when we're also talking about the possibility of losing money out of the current budget what I have to say is the same thing I said a month ago we did hire in um, people at the lower end of the scale than we hired then we lost some senior teachers uh, which does give us some overage in our salary line and that was obviously what I was looking at when I came in with the with the discussion of hiring a teacher um, I don't know exactly what the state is going to do um, but I do feel that we have to make decisions based on the best information we have um, we do have a situation here where we have not only asked for your input but also parent input and there's a general feeling people are seeing teachers with large classes larger than normal at an important grade level where they would like to see some assistance um, frankly my after thinking it over fairly carefully uh, my recommendation to you is to go ahead with this decision I recognize that you like I am going to be uncomfortable about it but I do think we need to uh, recognize the present need of children in those grade levels okay discussion from the board yeah. uh, I, I'd just like to reiterate a concern that I have and that is that um, third third grade is also quite large um, 140 kids in that grade um, and that and that grade was reduced by you know, one one section last year, and I'm and I am concerned about you know. There's only really since one child in, in fourth grade is in home study, um, that's only eight children more than is in third grade, and now fourth grade is getting two teacher assistants, and there isn't any assistance in the third grade where arguably the kids are younger and could use the individualized attention. Charlie, I th I think what we could do if we agree to to go along with this proposal is to also be watching that third grade and if possible we might have to utilize some of those teacher assistants in those other areas to equalize out the fairness and I would I would not be objectionable to doing that other comments I think it is appropriate knowing that class size has increased significantly over the past year that there are concerns by teachers and parents and students over the level of service that is able to provide and leave it at the discretion of building administrators and superintendent how those positions should be used. Rosemary? Yes, I'd just like a clarification on um, how many teachers in the third grade um, are um, splitting classes? Third grade level. Third grade level. I'll take the fourth grade level too. Could you help me with yes. that splitting? What are you talking? Uh, I'm sorry. About? How um, are you talking about splitting classes? I don't have any kids in the third or fourth right. grade, so right. sometimes my questions aren't phrased properly. I'm sorry. I, I know in the fifth grade that there are several teachers mm -hmm. who share the teaming one, situation, the, the specialty areas. Yeah, and some are sure. point five staff. Mm -hmm. Are there any that are point five in the third or fractional grade? in the third grade? or fractional in the fourth grade at the third grade level the classes that come to mind that are that are shared would be the uh, Welsh record classroom uh, at that in that classroom uh, mr. record as you know is our math teacher resource person and half part of his time is 0.5 his time is spent doing math related assignment as well as uh, Sue Welsh does the language arts assignment for her point five at that time so that is the only classroom at the third grade level that is shared 
that's in a shared situation. Okay. Some of the third grade teachers do some sharing of units and some instruction of units that are, that are share, that's being shared. But that's basically, that's kind of a professional courtesy that, that teachers do do at different grade levels. Now at fourth grade, did you ask me about fourth yes, grade please. as well? Fourth grade, uh, the teachers that are in full-time employment but that are in specialties, area, that are sharing specialty areas, i.e. math, language arts, for example, would be uh, the teaming teachers of um, Sandy Wiest and Andrew Lomack McNair, uh, and Nadine Record and Rachel Clark. The uh, other classrooms are basically self-contained and doing some kind of units sharing. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Other questions? Comments? Charlie? I, th I think when we get into the budget discussions, we're going to have to look at class sizes. I think that's something we're going to have to revisit. And it may become a reality that these class sizes will have to be larger. And and it, it's that at that time parents should put their input of whether they are for this and if they're for this mm -hmm. it may fall to tax base so that's true because at every meeting I've attended I've certainly heard parents say that that they want small class sizes so that is going to be a point of discussion this that's might be an appropriate um, time to state however that the um, state maximums have been relaxed due to their <coughs> reduction of funding. So we really, at a local level, need to address what we want for our schools. So as far as guidance for the uh, teachers, teacher assistance, uh, is the board in favor of um, the teaching assistance, Charlie? I would move that we um, direct the superintendent to hire two teaching assistants okay. to, to be used at her discretion. Second. Second. Further discussion? All in favor? Okay. Could I just take a moment to go back to Ann's statement and I certainly applaud uh, her for bringing to, uh, to the attention, our community's attention at the numbers of third grade and we certainly would be very willing to uh, allocate some time for the third grade uh, needs as well. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thanks, Nancy. Okay, our high school representatives are here. The first quarter at the, at the high school ended about two weeks ago, and we were all happy to get our report cards last Thursday. And also with the end of the quarter came the end of sports seasons. And actually, um, a fall sports banquet is in process at the high school right now. And another big fall event was the annual One Acts. This year they were a little bit different because for the first time in 14 years they weren't judged. However, they were, they were a great success and a lot of people came out for them and were really pleased with what they saw. And also the speech team began their season last weekend with, um, with a win at I believe Brewer, and um, we're looking forward to a great speech season also. Well, as you may know, Lori and I have been attending the Common Core meetings that have been held this month, and uh, we're really excited um, to give our views on the matter, and um, the adults seem to have really taken our input very constructively, very well. We've been talking to the SAC and other students, trying to um, generate some interest, and we've had about three or four SAC members join us in these meetings and they've been a great success and we'd like to thank you for your support in our attendance. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Your, your comments have been valuable and, and it's been very nice to see you there. I hope more students will attend. May I just make two comments and ask a question of Lori? Lori, do you have an idea how many uh, members of the public attended Thursday and Friday night's performance? I looked at about 600 people. I'm not sure, Mr. DeFusco might be, do you have any idea? I don't know, but I know a lot of students went back again the second night. It was and standing room only on Friday. Yeah, it was, it was packed both nights. They were really a great success. And my other comment is, um, although the two uh, elected 
high school representatives have been attending our uh, community dialogues. Also the president of the senior class and the uh, president of SAC has been in attendance and I do encourage any students who would like to uh, give information to me or, or to show up to please uh, feel free to be there. Thank you. Okay. Policy on establishing subcommittees, the second reading. Um, comments from the board on this policy for forming subcommittees? Anything you'd like to add or change or? Okay. Charlie? I move to accept the, um, the, the second reading and, and put it into effect as a board policy on the establishment of board subcommittees. Okay, second? Second. Further discussion? All in favor? Okay. Okay, and we will appoint the finance subcommittee, um, Peter Leslie, is chair of that committee and Rosemary Reed and Charlie Greer are on that committee so that's our next committee that's formed new business um, central office support staff personnel policy you have in your packet uh, and I might as well say at this point because in the next uh, one, two, three, four, five policies will be uh, similarly treated. Um, the, part, the personnel policy draft for central office support staff, I should point out this sort of in between being a regular board policy and being a kind of, of um, personnel uh, guideline kind of thing. Uh, this is a group that works in, in central office, a, uh, mostly secretarial staff, um, that do not belong to a bargaining unit. And in last year's audit, it was noted that there were no written policies for that particular group. Uh, by that, to, for instance, such uh, even such fundamental things as what the work year and uh, work day were and what um, actual benefits uh, accrued to positions and vacations and so forth. Um, it was my understanding a year ago when I started uh, that the uh, the process would take the normal shape of following, looking at uh, similar documents, for instance, what were the town personnel policies for similar staff as well as contracts that existed in our um, district. So gradually over a period of time, uh, the uh, secretarial staff reviewed this, put together something for my review. Uh, we have sat as a group a couple of times, along with business manager, and looked at this, made some changes, additions, deletions. Um, I felt that the next step was to take it to the policy, policy subcommittee, and they essentially went over it, and uh, as, certainly as far as a general outline, recommend for adoption. However, I also realized that when we send it to the whole board, you are going to have some comments, and so it, I did not expect you necessarily to adopt this tonight. And so that any feedback you have, we'll try to take notes quickly. And I do have, um, do you have copies of uh, Rosemary had sent in uh, before specific language recommendations? And Connie has typed up that and added in her handwriting so you would know what was added. Some of those specific. Um, Suggestions. Since this is a fairly long document, you may not feel comfortable with looking at that and making <coughs> quick decisions on those suggestions, but you may like to look through that, ask questions, um, and um, uh, certainly I can take this back and, and rework it, um, check this with any method that you ask. Uh, we can refer it again to the policy subcommittee. Or now that we have a finance subcommittee, either committee would be appropriate, although since the finance the policy subcommittee has already looked at it. You may want the, uh, them to look at it again, or you may decide that it would be a good idea to send it to the uh, finance, which would then cover almost the other half of the board, if you will. Those are all your options. Okay. Discussion on these policies? Charlie? Some of the recommendations that, that Rosemary has noted on the copy that was handed to us are some of the recommendations that in negotiations we're trying to get more equity in, on certain, certain policies and certain benefits. And some of the ones that she's noted are where, we, where we've headed with more, the more recent contracts. And, um, 
Okay. Just to bear that in mind. Okay. Um, so would the board like some more time to look over the, uh, the changes that Rosemary has suggested and uh, ask one of the committees to, to study this and bring it back next month? I did want to comment, although there are numerous changes, most of them only have to do with cl clarifying the uh, clearly stated intent, uh, elimination of a preposition or uh, an adverb, uh, elimination of the word all for some, and things of that nature. There is one um, uh, recommended change that I had that will cost the school system approximately $300 uh, in a 12-month period. It does not have to be retroactive. Um, and that is the group life insurance provision for an increase to one times the annual salary. Um, and that's the total annual um, cost. So that is the only item that is not uh, currently budgeted for. Are there any, uh, any changes that any other board member would like to see made other than these? All right. Then uh, why don't we send this back to the policy subcommittee since they started working on it and bring it back for the next meeting. And our last item is leave um, for a teacher. Do you want to go through those other? Oh, I'm sorry. All right. I did skip a whole. Okay. Uh, our other new policies, first reading, non-sexist language har harassment, evaluation of administrators, Evaluation of instructional programs and evaluation of the superintendent. Any changes or additions? I have um, changes on policy uh, ABC, um, student involvement and decision making in paragraph two. Uh, in light of the fact that last year the board approved uh, middle school students, um, I have proposed language that says, uh, the board shall recognize high school and middle school students at uh, board meetings. Uh, new sentence, they shall be encouraged to enter into discussions with the board at regular and special meetings, including workshops. And students are encouraged to contact school board members and the superintendent outside formal meetings. I did specifically eliminate the uh, numeral two. Okay. Other suggestions? I would just like to point out on the evaluation of administrators, teachers, and superintendents, all of which are part of the, this particular section, that um, those are essentially issues that are, um, that certainly for administrators and for teachers, are also subject to negotiation, that these policies, and I have shared the one on administrators with the administrative uh, group, um, and we noted that the teacher one will be really held in abeyance until we have finished our joint study work. Um, that the board level policy is kind of a general direction, a, a statement of general uh, intent, but the specifics of the evaluation would be worked out in, a, in an instrument so that I, I just want to make that point of clarification. The other issue is that I want to um, point out is that uh, we are, are going through a lot of policies tonight, some of which I think are fairly non-controversial, uh, probably it would be useful to put that in the context of reviewing our policy manual, and we have a lot to go. <laughs> um, we went through a whole section rather speedily because we weren't dealing with um, terribly uh, crunch issues or those issues there, for instance, that are, are being reviewed in other ways. Um, how much we can zip through these in future board meetings, I don't know. We make it bogged down, but we will continue to keep trying and coming back with, um, with suggestions. Okay. Rosemary? I do have four other um, suggestions mm -hmm. for wording. Did you want me to just say them all at once? None of them are substantial. Okay. okay. On policy AFCB, um, there's reference to uh, career ladder. And I didn't know if there were a more appropriate uh, term. It's AFCB? Okay. AFCB? That's only in the 
full policy book. And I think the the suggestion um, was for to accept that as it stands, <coughs> pending review of the school um, study committee. Excuse me. Joint, excuse me, study. joint study committee. Okay. So at that point, then there will be recommendation for revision. That's I'm okay. sorry. You're right. Um, my next three comments are regarding the policies requiring action by the board. Uh, in the evaluation of superintendent policy AFB, um, under guidelines B, uh, it, the last line says session with all board members present. I would like to have the word all uh, removed. I would like to see that with a majority of the board present. I would not like to see the superintendent evaluated without at least a majority of the board. I don't I'm have a problem with that. I didn't want all. Well, tonight's a perfect example. Only seven of us, uh, five of the seven can be here, and I didn't want to hold up the superintendent's recommendation if only five members could be in attendance, for example. That is the majority. Right, I know that. But, but my, my I'm wording. Just saying, all we have board members present. I think you have to specify right. that you need a majority for changing it. From we don't want to have a policy where we have every single board member having input on that. I mean, I'm very, uh, I'm very comfortable with leaving it so that every single board member has to be present at the evaluation. It seems to me like we could, you know, boards could schedule a meeting to, to have that happen, whether it has to be delayed a week or two weeks or whatever, but at a workshop that Ann and I attended, um, they stressed the importance of the entire board being there to give input. Um, I guess, you know, as a policy, I would like to see it stay that way. Uh, I would agree with Rosemary um, or with, you know, Charlie that if, if there's an extended illness, for instance, um, that could cause significant delay in, in evaluations, and so I think the majority would probably be most workable. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Majority's fine with me. Okay. Good point. Also under this policy, um, one of the, the workshops that I went to last year had to do with superintendent evaluations, and this probably isn't the time, but I would like to submit to the pol this policy subcommittee a, at least a recommended um, format. I don't particularly like the format we have. And I'm sure that uh, Dr. Goldman also has some suggestions. It's a process I've been through from a variety <laughs> of points of view and one that I'm quite willing to try different things. Okay. And, and in fact, this, this process assumes that you accept that, that, the, that, that the superintendent is doing a good job and if you feel that they're doing a bad job or they're doing an acceptable job, you have to verbalize it. You just can't rate it. And I think that's what, what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. we, we use a rating process and I don't think that's, that's too easy. Okay. Other comments? Thank you. My last comment is on um, AFE, um, Evaluation of Instructional Programs. And uh, on line three, it says periodic reports shall be presented to the board to enable them to make judgments on the successes. Um, I would rather that say strengths or weaknesses um, of the program. To, and it goes on to say, no instructional program shall be considered as the final answer to all school programs. Excuse me. No instructional program shall be considered as the final answer and all school programs shall be under continuous study. Um, I would like to have a period there and deletion of by the staff. Well, if I might make a suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> of course. I, I certainly think you want it under study by the staff. I think that the issue of, um, of uh, adding for instance, board scrutiny or whatever you have in mind would be uh, appropriate, but that um, I, I would certainly hope that we, the staff was in fact scrutinizing programs. Um, if the idea is to make sure that the board has a role in that, add the board. Uh, actually, I was thinking more of, uh, 
um, the general public. I, I just didn't want people to be discouraged from giving input, um, thinking that you know all decisions were made by staff. And I just thought by a period there, we just sort of implied staff and any other person who was willing to uh, give input. But I, I mean, you know, it's just my suggestion. Yeah. Um, I, I really think that is covered in the in the second paragraph where it says the superintendent is expected to lead the staff community and board in the development and ongoing review of board adopted criteria and standards. Um, I, I I would just I think the value of having um, continuous study by the staff is that it does have some accountability that the staff is responsible to continuously review the program. Other thoughts? Okay. So these will also go back to the policy subcommittee? Pardon? I don't think there is a final oh. one. Okay. They'll review it. Are these there. like first reading? These are first reading. These, first read. <coughs> these whole sections are first reading. Yeah, Charlie? Okay, under ACA, non sexist language, mm -hmm. I, I only wish to change one word. Uh, the school board urges that all staff members be especially alert to and avoid the use of sexist or other discriminatory language in all communications, both. And I would like to change oral to verbal and written. I think oral it has a kind of sexist connotation. Hmm. Other comments? Okay. Leave of the future. Yes. Final item. Uh, final item uh, added um, tonight, and thank you for taking it into consideration. I have a request from Linda Hall, who was an eighth grade teacher, um, and due to personal consideration, she would like to have an unpaid leave of absence for three weeks, beginning December 2nd, going through December 20th. Uh, I have discussed this with Nancy Hutton, the principal, um, who has, of course, discussed it thoroughly with Linda. We do recommend that you grant this leave. It will not uh, add um, to any, it's not a monetary burden. The question, of course, is can we find a suitable substitute? Will the programs continue to go on? Um, and we are satisfied that that will be possible and that uh, we believe that it's, a, uh, it's an issue that is in everybody's best interest. Therefore, we do recommend a three-week unpaid leave of absence for Linda Hall. Comments? In talking to Nancy th this evening, I guess I need to ask a question at where will those students be in the project that they're working on? Will they be starting one at the at the conclusion of a, I, I believe those are, are three to whatever number of weeks per project? That's, that's right. They have it set up. And our plan is that Linda will meet with whoever the substitute is so that they can, <coughs> excuse me, clarify exactly where the students are and where they'll be going. I don't know, and I'm not sure Linda can tell us right now if on November 27th they'll be finished. Um, I think they have something planned to be kind of wrapped up, but they will take care of that by discussing it together. Thank you. Rosemary? I'll make a motion when discussion is complete. Okay, any other comments? Okay. Yes, uh, Madam Chairman, I move that we accept the request by uh, Linda Hull for a three-week un unpaid leave of absence. Seconded. Further discussion? All in favor? Okay. Um, that's the end of our uh, agenda. Now, uh, do I hear a motion for a consideration of a request by the superintendent to enter executive session for the purposes of discussing a personnel issue? So moved. Second. Further discussion? All in favor? Three of us. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Did we all vote? <laughs> yeah, the majority did.